All right. Testing, testing. All right, all right, all right. God is good. Good morning, everybody. This is Reverend Essie of New Birth Ministries, and we are here one more day. God is good. And I hope that you had a beautiful weekend. You're having a beautiful weekend thus far. And as you can see, since we are since we are honoring our veterans, I wore my United States Marine Corps shirt. <laughs> since I'm a veteran, the United States Marine Corps veteran. God bless all of you veterans out there that took care of our country for us. Amen. So, I will start out with, this is morning coffee in heaven with Jesus. Amen. Let's take a sip. All right. The Sunday, November 12th, 2023 version, I should say. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Good morning, Miss Alexi. God bless you. I love you. Amen. God bless everyone who is on. Good morning, Shadow. Okay, I see you. Good morning. Hallelujah. God is good. So I'm going to talk about today uh, the 23rd Psalm. Okay. And uh, it's a beautiful psalm. And a lot of us were taught that psalm in, in, uh, uh, when we were young in church, in a Bible school. And today we're going to discuss it. I'm sure you probably heard many people discuss it before. It is an important psalm to those who really love the Lord and just want to thank him for being in our lives. Amen. So turn your swords to psalm 23 amen and i will pray us in heavenly father we thank you god for being our god there is none like you we thank you for sitting high and looking low and bringing us up with jesus in high places along with you you're a good god i ask holy spirit that you use me to teach this word today to everybody that needs to hear it let something come out of me through you that people need to hear to deliver them out of their troubles. Amen. There's so much going on in the world today. We all need comfort. And this psalm comforts people. And Lord God, let this video be done by the Holy Spirit so much that people can come back and listen to it and just be relaxed and calm, knowing that God's got this. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for taking care of our families, our ministries, our homes, our land and everything that we lay our hands to do for the kingdom of God. I lift up every member of our families, the people who are watching this, I lift them all up to you, Jesus. And I lift up, the, we lift up prayers for Israel. You said to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, so we're lifting up prayers to Israel. And we're lifting up prayers for all of the people who may not be able to enjoy the, the um, upcoming holidays. We lift them up to you, let somebody come into their lives to help them out hallelujah hallelujah and lord god we pray for all of our the three f's we pray for our friends our followers and our families thank you jesus and amen you'd be surprised at who you have following you it doesn't mean that you have to be a high person or have a youtube channel or or facebook or whatever you would be surprised who is following you especially if you're following jesus christ because you have that anointing yeah, we have that anointing. Amen. And 23rd Psalm is a beautiful praise and worship song that worships. It, it soothes your mind. Whenever you say it, some of us can repeat it. And some of us have forgotten some of the words, but that's okay. <laughs> Just keep practicing. And it soothes your mind and your soul. And it causes you to give thanks to God. To let God know just how important he is to us. Amen. That he is our shepherd. He is our leader. Amen. There are so many double-minded people out there today. They can't pick a side. They don't know whose side that they're on. Pick a side. And when you do, praise him. Amen. Like David did in Psalm 23. Amen. Hallelujah. Hi, Ellie. Back. She's back. Ellie's back. Yay. <laughs> Shadow. Lexi. Amen. God is good. The first thing we have to consider whenever we read Psalm 23 is what or who is leading us? What or who is leading you? Amen. And I'll read it. Okay. Uh, six, six verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. This moves my soul. Every time I hear it, it just moves me. Amen. So, David is showing who is who is um who is leading him amen david is a leader he was a wonderful leader david that wrote this was king priests he he, he was everything okay and uh he is blessing the lord and we need to bless the lord every day amen um we we have to let the lord know that he is our supplier he is our leader. Amen. Hallelujah. There's so many, so many things out in the world that wants to take God's place in our lives. Don't do it. Don't allow it. Amen. In fact, let the enemy know who your God is. Let him know that you love the Lord and there's nothing that he can give you that would take you away from underneath the arm of the Lord. Amen. David was a shepherd herding his father's flocks in Bethlehem. Amen. He was a trained and experienced caregiver for the sheep. Amen. Now, he was a trained and experienced caregiver for the sheep. Now, this means that David just wasn't taking care of sheep or whatever, just going before them or making sure everything was okay. He was trained in what he did. Training. Amen. Okay. Be trained. If you have something in your life you want to do, if you feel that God has called you to something, learn about it. Amen. Train. Whatever. If you have to go to a school, if you have to sit under somebody, amen, a, a boss, you know, not just on a church or anything. And if you want to learn about it, sit under somebody that knows what they're doing. If you remember, I was saying, I think last Sunday, I was saying about how I like preachers. I follow preachers. Okay who are trained. I follow preachers who can train me. And I was telling you about the books and everything I have back here. They're, but they're pre preachers who teach. They're preachers who have been there. Follow somebody who has been there. Amen. Follow a good shepherd. I like people who study. I, lo I love researchers. And, and researchers can teach you what you need to know. They can tell you what was happening in Israel at this certain time when the Bible was written. And some of them can tell you the years between each book or something. Follow somebody who knows what, what the Bible is saying. Amen. Follow somebody who can explain to you what the Bible is saying. Follow somebody who is going to feed you. I'm going ahead of myself here. Follow somebody who's going to feed you and give you providence. Okay, uh, Providence 29 and 5. Let me look that up in the back of my um, uh, Thompson Chain reference. 2905. And if you remember, I was telling everybody, get yourself a Thompson Chain Reference and a Strong's Concordance because they all go together. Amen. Um, let me see. 2905. Uh, Providence. Let me see if I got there. Okay. 2905. Divine Providence. You need divine providence. When God gives you providence, he doesn't take it back. Amen. He doesn't ask for anything back. You don't have to work for it. Amen. Just believe. Who else did, uh, well, I'm not going to mention names, but did other leaders around the world throughout the years, okay, tell you to just believe? Nothing, no other, just believe. And they died, and there's people who still believe in them, and they did absolutely nothing for them. They died. They didn't go to heaven like Jesus did. They didn't conquer evil like Jesus did. Amen. Follow the champ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Follow the champ. Uh, providence. Okay. Um, let's see. Divine providence. 
examples of plentifulness, okay? The plentiful supplies. Uh, Israel in the wilderness. And that's uh, Deuteronomy 2, 7. For Elijah, remember Elijah? I love the story of Elijah. He got divine providence, okay? Divine supplies in a time of famine. 1 Kings 17, 6 uh, and 16. For Elijah in the wilderness. Amen. 1 Kings 19, 6. If you guys want to write this down. For the army of the three kings, 2 Kings 3, 20. For the prophet's widow, remember the widow, who gave her providence. Amen. All she had to do was go out and get some jars. Amen. <laughs> you know, and the way the story ends, she never ran out. Do you want to be the kind of person that never runs out? Amen. Divine providence, not providence from man. There are some people who will give you something. You have to be careful of, of the uh, gift giver. Okay, be careful of the gift giver. There are a lot of people who give gifts, but they want something back from you. And they're going to make you tap dance for it. Amen. Our shepherd, when he gives us gifts, we don't have to tap dance for it. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, he'll give you overflowing blessings. Hallelujah. Uh, for the army of the three kings, for the prophet's widow, for Samaria in the times of famine. That's 2 Kings 7, 8. If you want to write these down. Uh, for the multitude that followed Jesus Christ, Matthew 14, 20. The multitude was following Jesus Christ. Now, when we think about multitudes following people, we think about buses and cars and taxis and you know, airplanes. You get there real quick. Back in the day, they wore those sandals out. They walked and walked and walked. There was no airplanes. There was no jet, uh, jets or anything like that. There was no bullet trains. They walked and they were tired. This is why when you read in the Bible, it says that when they went in each other's homes, they washed, washed their feet or washed one another's feet because they were tired. They walked. Amen. All that time. Well, some had camels or whatever. Okay. But they mostly walked. Amen. Um, for the multitude, for the saints, Philippians 4.19. Amen. Let's go to Philippians. Let me use my, let's go to Philippians 4.19. Amen. I, I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. I'll use my Bible. Philippians 4.19. And many people could say this without even looking at the Bible. Amen. For my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus he will supply all of your needs. And the devil is trying to steal away our faith. He's trying to make it sound like every day of our lives, the devil's trying to make it sound like God's not going to take care of you. You better take care of yourself. You better trust in your flesh and stop trusting in him. Look at the times you ask him for this. Look at the times you ask him for that. And it never came. That's because he's a, the devil is a liar and his breath stinks. Amen. And he doesn't know what God is going to do. That is God's business. He can The devil cannot tell you what God is going to do. He didn't pay attention to him. So how are, is he going to expect for you to do the same? Amen. God is our divine supplier. Overflowing blessings. Let's go to Psalms 23, 5. Okay, okay the next one. Let me see. Psalms 23, 5. The fifth one says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Overflowing blessings. When you worship the Lord God Almighty, you have overflowing blessings. They might not come in when you want them to, but they will come. When Daniel prayed, what did the angel tell, tell Daniel when he prayed? He told Daniel, he said, from the time you opened up your mouth, I was working on it. I was, I was bringing your blessing to you. But what did he say? The prince of Persia stopped him. There are demons out there. I didn't even mean to go this way. Thank you, Lord. He is. There are demons out there that are trying to stop you from believing in God, trying to stop you from believing that God answers prayer, trying to stop you from believing that miracles are still happening today. Amen. That's their job. That is what they are going to do. And if you believe them, then, you know, you have you got to choose a side. Amen. It's, it's Shadow says, seems that they can cause delays. They do. Thank you. Yes, they do. They can cause delays. 
divine, okay, they could cause delays and the things that God sent you, amen, he sent it to you. Now, there's people sitting out there and they're yelling at God and they're mad and they're saying, well, I asked you for this and I asked you for that and it never came. You don't have patience. I, I always preach on patience. People, in order to be a Christian, you have to have patience. Amen. Treasures of goodness. Uh, Psalm 31, 19. Let me go to my e-sword so I could do these quicker. Psalm, that's in the uh, Old Testament, 31, 19. All right. And it says, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Now, when we're talking about fear here, we're talking about trusting, not cowarding down fear. You know, you're afraid of God, but you respect. When we're talking about fear for God, we're talking about having respect for God, knowing that you could, you could end up in hell if you don't do his will. Amen. Having respect for God. All right. Treasures of goodness. Um, and uh, let me see. Oh, I said, let's go to Isaiah 64, 4. We were just talking about Isaiah. Let's go to. Oops. Isaiah. This keeps moving and I don't like that. 64. 4. Okay. And it says. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. What does that sound like? Amen. God is trying to tell us. You don't know what God has prepared for you. People give up on God. Amen. They give up on him. You'd be surprised at what God has prepared for you. And Matthew 22, 4, a spiritual feast. God gives us every day of our lives a spiritual feast. Even if you haven't had a sandwich, you're still blessed. Amen. It's, again, he sent uh, forth other servants saying, tell them which are, be, are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my <clears throat> my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. And this is what God is telling people today. Come unto the marriage. You have a glorious inheritance, which, which is in Luke 2, 31 and Luke 14, 17. And you have a heavenly home. We talked about this before. Amen. J John 14, uh, 2, if you want to write it down. In my father's house. Amen. In my father's house. Or what? And I want to see if somebody writes it on here. John uh, 14, 2. What's in Jesus's father's house? Amen. Many mansions. Amen, shadow. In my father's house are many mansions. Not a dozen. <laughs> Not 355. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. A pl Jesus is preparing a pl You have a beautiful mansion in heaven. So why would we covet something that somebody else has down here on earth? That's not going to last long anyway. You have a mansion in heaven. And, and it, it, say God only knows what it looks like, what it consists of. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> amen. And Amen. Put, keep what God has given you. Don't trade it for anything. Like I was saying about the little girl that had a little, she had a, a little teddy bear behind her back. No, she had a little teddy bear and she's standing there with Jesus, right? And Jesus has a huge one behind his back. He has this big teddy bear behind his back, right? And he wants to give this big teddy bear to the little girl. But the little girl won't let go of the little teddy bear. Let go of the, sm the, the small things, let go of the little things, and allow Jesus to give you the big things. Just because you can't see it, it's around his back. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Amen. Ellie says, back to what you said, patience. People don't want to be patient, nor do they stop grumbling. There's a heart there. Thank you for the hearts, guys. Amen. Yeah, amen. Stop grumbling. Have patience. Jesus had patience with us. Amen. 
Look at the stuff Jesus went through for 33 years, especially the last three. If Jesus has had and still has patience for us, why can't we have patience? What's stopping us from having patience? Amen. Amen. All right. There, there was uh, people, uh, good shepherds are trained and experienced caregivers for the sheep. Amen. Providence. Many have trained but have no experience before receiving their pastoral duties. Now, this is dealing with the church. There are people who are pastors, uh, not talking about any specific person worldwide. There are people who are pastors and they're put in, you know, the Bible says, do not put in a novice. And there are people who are, there are uh, pastors who are putting in novices. A novice is a new person, neo, okay? It's a term, term neo. It's a new person, <clears throat> And they haven't had any experience shepherding whatsoever. But there's pastors putting them in position. And there's some churches have 20 people. Some people might have five. Some people have 5,000. Some people might have 10,000. And there are pastors that are leading the sheep and don't know where they're leading them. They're not leading the sheep according to the Holy Spirit of the Most High God. They don't have a, re they barely have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to lead. They don't get revelation. And some of them, I hate to say, don't know the Bible that well. Amen. Amen. I know. I know. There are some who, and we have to be very careful of people who have no training that are calling themselves shepherds. And there are some people in leadership, different countries, not just ours. There are some people in leadership have no training. They don't know what they're doing. Amen. Amen. Even Jesus trained the disciples for three years. And this is why I believe Bible study, Bible schools go to at least three years. Amen. A good shepherd cares for the needs and the wants of the sheep. I saw something today. Uh, there's a place in my, uh, where I live at in my area. And, um, the, the, the Lemoyne Center in Washington, Pennsylvania. And I saw something on, yeah, shout out to them because what they did was beautiful. They were giving out um, turkeys and cakes and food and greens and potatoes to uh, whoever came. Okay, I think it was yesterday or today. And they had uh, vid uh, sh uh, videos and uh, not, uh, not videos, but pictures of it. And now they were not taking the pictures for credit. You know, like everybody says, well, you know, if you give somebody something, you don't always have to take it. They weren't taking the pictures for credit. They were taking the pictures to let people know they are there for them. And you should have seen these pictures. They were gorgeous. They were beautiful. People were coming. There was a long strand of people and they gave them so much food. It looked like they couldn't carry it. People came in with those, the baskets on wheels. Some of them were the, the, the ones you pull and the other ones were like wider ones that you would use like in a garden or something. People were, they were getting filled. Now that is a place, not a church. And some places do better than churches. Amen. That is a good shepherd over the people. Amen. Hallelujah. They are good shepherds. They see over the people of Washington County, the people that they, they, they're helping people. Amen. And nobody left empty handed. How is your shepherding? I want to ask that personally. How is your shepherding um, with your friends and your family? Um, are you feeding them so well? that nobody is leaving empty-handed. Amen. And even though you might be trying to talk to people about Jesus, you might be uh, ministering, you know, a little bit at a time, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. You know, you can't, you can't um, gorge people. You can't gorge it down their throat. But how are you shepherding? Are you teaching people about Jesus? Do you care for their souls? Amen. Because what happens is from generation to generation to generation to generation, They'll remember that. You might think they're not listening to you. You might think they're not paying attention to you. But guess what? When it's our time to go, Lord forbid, when it's our, you know, I want, I want 120, at least so I can see Jesus come back. Amen. I mean, you never know when he's going to come back. <laughs> I don't, I don't want the, the three score and 10. Give me the 120. But when it's our time to go, the people that you talk to are going to remember what you said. And believe it or not, it's going to come out of their mouth. They're going to start spewing out what you said. Because you taught them so well. Amen. And, and the, the generation under them is going to do the same thing. And under them is going to do the same thing. 
what you teach others is going to be taught by the ones that you're teaching. Each one, teach one. Amen. Each one, teach one. Amen. A good shepherd cares for the needs and wants of the sheep. Um, now, I got to bring this up. There, there was an instance years ago where this one woman always, always needed rent. Always. It just, no matter where she moved or whatever, she always needed help with her rent. Okay. And this one church check kept trying to help her and help her. They helped her a few times and it got to the point where it got crazy. You could tell when somebody is abusing your kindness, when somebody is abusing you, you could tell when somebody's doing that. And they literally had to tell her to help her. They had to show her how to work for herself and to do things to get her own rent. You know, you can, that's abuse. Amen. I was like, I was saying last Sunday, that's abuse of God's grace. You know, help somebody a couple times, two, three times, you know, if you have to, you know, but then show them when you see that somebody's falling and they can't catch on and they can't do it by themselves, show them how to do it. Amen. I say, don't, don't give a person a fish, teach them how to fish. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many sheep find their best rest laying down in green fields. Amen. 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 Let me look at the, see if it's a, Spiritual rest, 3011, in the back of my Thompson Chain Reference Bible. 3011. All right. I don't know if you guys have Thompson Chain Reference or not. Um, it's, I, it's a teacher-preacher Bible, I call it. And um, it's one of the best to me, um, especially for people that want to study. 30, I'm getting it. 11. Okay. 3011. There we go. Um, rest and unrest. Amen. Rest. The divine presence gives rest. Do you have the divine presence of God in your life? Some people don't have any rest because they don't have the divine presence of God in their life. Or they're not paying attention to the divine presence of God in their lives. Amen. So ex Exodus thirty three fourteen says, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Amen. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. Psalm 23, 2. Amen. What says? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He will give you rest. God didn't come, Jesus didn't come to this earth to cause commotion with people and with us. Okay, with the devil, yes, but not with us. Amen. He wants us to have rest. Amen. God, Jesus wants you to have rest. If you are not experiencing rest in your life, Either you have to get in touch more with God, start praying more. I, one of the things I want to tell you, praise, worship, and prayer, amen, and speaking in tongues will get you there. But you just can't go on in life and continue to do the same things that you've been doing, thinking that's going to work because the evil is going to take over because you're not doing enough good, amen. Rest, uh, if you want rest, amen, you got to depend on God to give it to you. Amen. Um, Psalm 55, 6 says, And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Anybody remember that? <laughs> For then would I fly away and be at rest. Amen. Anybody remember what movie somebody said? Somebody used that in one of the movies. Anybody remember? Oh, if I had wings like a dove, then I will fly away and be at rest. I don't know if they, when you get it, just go ahead and write it down. Okay. <laughs> Amen. And everybody's asking for wings of a dove. Okay. You don't need wings of a dove to fly away, to have rest. All you need is to talk to Jesus. We used to sing a song and praise a worship song. I'm, I'm scared to do it on YouTube because they strike you so much. You know what I mean? But it's literally a praise and worship song. Nobody owns it. Okay. Just Christians sing it. Um, 
I'm going to try it here. Why don't you have a little talk with Jesus? Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry. He will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in, you know a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. Have a little talk with Jesus. It doesn't have to be, you know, like WordPress, when you're typing on WordPress, you, some of you have blogs and you have to have so many words, you know, no, you, you could say Jesus help and he will help you. Amen. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. True repose found in God. Uh, Psalm 116, seven, return unto thy rest. O my soul for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. Amen. The Lord deals bountifully with us every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Sh yeah, Shadow knows. You know that song? Just talk to Jesus. Amen. He said, she said, uh, Shadow said, I don't know if you're male or female. Amen. Yay. They used to sing that in my church. Amen. I love that song. I love that song. Let's just keep praying that these platforms, okay, uh, keep allowing us to sing praise and worship to God. Because if they stop us from singing praise and worship to God because somebody turned it into a song, I don't know where this is coming from, but it makes sense. God is good. Amen. He's telling us something. If they stop us from doing praise and worship on these platforms because somebody turned it into a song, a, a, a well, my day used to be record or tape or whatever, CD, okay, there's a problem. I'm going to continue to praise and worship God, and, and I'm telling you, I will not stop. If they don't like me, cancel, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to continue to praise and worship the Lord God Almighty. You have to be very, very careful because a friend of mine, has a has a, ch a channel here and um they wrote him and told him that there are things that they took off of his channel because they didn't like him okay uh you know how facebook always has community against the